To truly understand authentication in Web API, I think it's important to understand a generic token authentication, where we'll have a token manager for generating tokens and validating tokens. If this is the first time you watch my video tutorials, my name is Frank Liu. I am creating weekly videos covering every aspect of software development. If you are interested and like my teaching style, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that you won't miss the next tutorial. This particular series is about Web API. There is going to be two phases. The first phase is to understand every technical part of Web API. And in the second phase, we are going to create API endpoints and consume them in different type of applications. Let's get started with token authentication. From this diagram, you see that we have a client and web API. The client is consumer of the API. But for authentication, we need the token manager to generate and verify the token. And it works like this. So you're going to have the client to authenticate against the token manager. And if the authentication is successful, the token manager is going to generate a token. And this token is usually stored in the data store for verification purpose. So after generating a token, the token manager will return the token back to the client. And then for every subsequent Web API calls, the client will need to pass the token to the Web API. The Web API would then verify the token with the token manager. The token manager will return a verification result. If the verification result is a success, the Web API will return information that is requested by the client. So this diagram simplifies the calling sequence. In fact, the authentication is also goes through Web API. So let's actually take a look at the actual sequence diagram. So we have a client, Web API, and then token manager. Client authenticate through the Web API against the token manager. The token manager will generate the token and return the token if the authentication is successful. And then the token is returned to the client. Then for any subsequent calls, it will call the endpoints with the generated token. The Web API will verify the token against the token manager. If the verification is successful, the Web API will do its own processing and return the result to the client. But let's actually jump into Visual Studio and create our own custom token authentication. So let's continue with our source code that we have been creating from our previous episode. From the diagram, we know that first of all, we need to create an endpoint on the API for authentication purpose. For that, we're going to right click on the controllers folder. We're going to add another controller, which is for authentication purpose. All right. So we're going to do controller. We're going to create an empty controller and we're going to call it authenticate controller. And then inside here, we are going to have one method and this is going to return the action result because it's going to return the token if the authentication is successful. So we're going to say, you know, user, it's the username, we're going to return the password. So here we don't have the token manager yet, but we're going to write it just so that we have the logic. And if you have been using uh, test driven development, you must be familiar with this technique where you just write things even though it doesn't exist yet. Token manager doesn't exist, but well, that's fine. We're going to return a token uh, because the endpoint usually returns JSON. So we're going to return a JSON by using a dynamic object. So we're going to have a dynamic object returned. Inside it, it's going to have one field, the token itself. All right, so we're going to use the token manager, which doesn't exist yet. That's fine. So we're going to have one method from the token manager, which is going to create a token. And yeah, so let's keep it like this for now. And then when we implement it, we'll see what the data type that actually returns. And if the, the authentication fails from the token manager, we are going to add error to the model state. Add model error. The key is we're going to say unauthorized. Unauthorized. 
And then I'm gonna say, you are not allowed. Well, let's just uh, use a generic message. I'm gonna say, you're not authorized. Avoiding giving too much information is a good practice. So we're gonna return the unauthorized result. All right, so we don't have the token manager, but that's fine. And then we have, we have used two episodes. The previous two episodes, we talk about the filter pipeline, which is also called the MVC invocation pipeline. If we bring that slide, you can see that once the middleware pipeline finishes, we'll go into the filter pipeline. And the first filter is a authorization filter even before the resource filter that we have demonstrated in the previous episode. So if you haven't watched the previous two episodes about the filter pipeline, go ahead and click on the card, watch them first, because we are gonna use authorization filter to do the custom token authentication here. And for that, we are going to, inside the filters folder, we are gonna add another uh, class, and we are going to call it token authentication filter. It's going to be token authentication, authentication filter. And this one is going to derive from attribute. So because we're going to use it uh, as an attribute, we can use it on a controller or a particular action method. The key thing here is to implement the I authorization filter interface. And we're going to control dot and import the namespace here. After that, we're going to control dot again to implement the interface. And it has one method that we need to implement, which is the unauthorization uh, method. And in here, again, we don't have the token manager, but we need to use a token manager to verify the, the token. So we have the context here, which we can use to pull out the token. And the token should reside inside a header that is called authorization, right? So we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna use context and you can see that we have access to HTTP context and then we can access the request object and inside it, we have headers. And we're gonna say contains key. So, and this is going to be the authorization, authorization, making sure we're spelling correctly. So authorization, so if it doesn't contain the authorization filter, then it's going to be, what do we do here? Well, we, we're gonna validate the token later, so let's use the result. We're gonna say result equals true, but if it doesn't contain the authorization header, we're gonna say the result equals false. And then here, we're gonna pull out the token from, uh, again, from here, right? So headers. The headers is a, if you hover our mouse over it, the header is a, right? So which, what we can do is, because we know that it already has the authorization from here, because otherwise, right? So we're gonna actually, we're gonna actually have token like this, uh, string dot empty, right? And then we're gonna say, if result is still true, then we're gonna assign the token to, so we can use first, uh, and use first, the key has to be, you know, authorization, and then we can take the value out of, so now we have the token here. And after that, let me minimize the solution explorer so that you can see everything. So here we have the token and we need to verify the token. And we don't have the token manager yet, but that's fine. Uh, we're still writing it. So token manager dot. We're gonna call it. Uh, have a, it's gonna have a method, and we're gonna call it token verify token. Right? And we're gonna provide a token. And if this is not successful, then we're gonna say the result is also false, right? And then here, if the result is false, it's going to ignore the rest of the filters. It's gonna return right from here and outside. We need it to finish early. So the, uh, the way to do it is first, we need to add an error to the model state. And again, this is unauthorized, right? Because you don't have a valid token or you don't even have a token, right? Okay? So you are not authorized. And then here we're gonna say context.result. So this is a way to, uh, in all of the filter pipelines, if we want to short circuit it, then this is how we do it. We're gonna say, you know, we're gonna assign 
a result to the context style result, then the filter MVC will we see it and then do the short circuiting automatically for for us. So here we're gonna say n authorized. Gonna do control dot to import the namespace. All right. So and then we're gonna provide the model state, and that's it. Right. And in order to use this, we need to uh, decorate this to our controller. Uh, we have a version two right here. Again, this is not a right way to do the versioning. We're going to talk about versioning later, but uh, uh, we're going to use it for demonstration purpose. We're going to decorate this controller with the token authentication filter. That means every single action method will be subject to authentication. All right, so we can call any one, one of them and expect the uh, token authentication to be triggered. So now that we have the authentication controller where we use the authentication, well, authenticate method to talk to the token manager to actually doing the authentication. And then we also have a token authentication filter that is decorated on our controller uh, to do the authorization for each and every endpoint. Now it's time to implement a token manager. And to do that, we're gonna minimize this and then open it up. We're gonna create a tokens folder. Let's actually call it token authentication, right? And the first thing we need to do is we need to have a token class, right? To contain the token itself, right? And the token is going to be just called, just called token. And it's gonna have two properties. Um, the first one will contain the token itself. We can't call it token because it's going to complain. The token member names cannot be the same. So let's call it value, token value, right? That makes sense. And then we're gonna have a date time to specify the expiry date, right? Expiry date and time of the token. And that's good enough. And then we're gonna implement the token manager itself. So we're gonna add a class here. Uh, we're gonna call it we're gonna call it token manager and the token manager will have a uh, authenticate method, right? And it passes in the username as well as the password. Let's just call it username. And then inside here, we're gonna do some validations on the username and password, right? So first of all, it has to exist. It, this username has to exist, the password it has to exist. And then the username Let's actually just uh, hard code. It's just usually gonna authenticate against the database uh, or some other type of data stores. But for demonstration purpose, I'm just going to hard code the username and password. So your username has to be admin and password has to be password in order to authenticate successfully. So I'm gonna hard code it. Um, so the verification of the username is case insensitive. So I'm gonna do to lower and the password the username is admin so it has to be admin and the password has to be password uh, and here it, it's case sensitive so i'm going to do like this so if all of the conditions are satisfied then we're going to return true otherwise we're going to return false okay so that's that and then uh, if we go to our controller, we can see that we are using this as a boolean, right? So we did that correctly. Now we need the new token method to be implemented. So we're going to implement that new token method, and we are returning that as a, a token, right? So we already created the token uh, object here, class here. I'm going to return the token object here. So we're going to say new token. As a method, and um, so we're gonna have you know token equals new token, and we are going to have uh, value, and we're gonna use uh, a GUID, right? So value is going to be a GUID GUID dot new GUID, and it's going to be a string, right? But GUID is not string, so here we are going to do two string, 
And then we're going to have expiry date. So the expiry date is going to, in order to test it properly, so I'm going to say it's going to expire within within one minute. Usually you want it to be longer, right? But in order to test the expiration, we are going to just a one minute, one minute uh, expiry date. And so we created a token. We are going to store the token somewhere so that we can validate a token, right? And if you have done any type of unit testing, uh, a data store can be mocked, right? So we're going to actually mock our data store. And here, in order to do that, we're going to have a private storage here. Uh, and then as long as when we do the uh, dependency injection, we are going to use a singleton for data store. Any type of data store mock has to be registered as a singleton uh, dependency injection, then if that's the case, then it's going to work exactly like a database. Okay. Well, not exactly, but very similar to a database. So we are going to have a list of token, and we're going to call it list tokens. Right? Uh, and in order to make that work, then we need to have a constructor here, and we're going to initialize the list tokens, list tokens. All right, so once we created the token, then we're going to add this new token to the tokens, add this new token in. And after that, we're going to return a newly created token. All right, so that's that. And then another thing we need, which is the uh, verification of the token. Verification of the token is used in the authorization filter. Right, token authentication filter. See, we have a verified token. We need to we need to implement that in the token manager as well. So uh, for that, we're going to create a new method. I'm going to call it verify token public boolean verify token, and I'm going to pass in the the token as a string, and then we are going to use a link expressions here to say if tokens contain any of the uh, token. So if the value is the same as the token that is passed in, and uh, we need to verify uh, the expiry date has to be in the future, be greater than now, then we are returning true so as a valid token only. First of all, the token exists. Secondly, the expiry date uh, is not there yet. Right. Otherwise, the verification fails. So token manager has to be used uh, through dependency injection. Otherwise, this uh, mock data store will not work. Right. So we are going to actually let's uh, right click, and then we're gonna choose the quick action, then extract interface. Right. And then OK. Then the and the interface is automatically created, and we have all of the three methods that we need. And let's take a look at the here. Uh, so token manager, token manager. So we need to dependency inject the token manager here. So for that, we create a constructor, and then we're going to say I token manager, which is the interface that we just extracted. I'm going to control dot import the namespace. You can see it's, uh, it's token authentication namespace imported. And then here we do a control dot again, control dot again to initialize. So we have it already. It's called token manager and we have the name correctly used and the method name is also correct. Authenticate and creating new token. And then let's go to our uh, version. Let's go to our authentication filter. Here we also need to have the token manager dependency injected and a filter cannot use a regular dependency injection a regular way of dependency injecting to in order to get the token manager what we need to do here is to actually get it from the context right so the context actually has a and then here we can request the service by calling the get service and then you need to provide the type of the, the thing that you want to get. Uh, that is going to be our 
interface that we just created, just extracted. So here I'm going to control dot and also import the namespace. And after that, this is going to return us a object. So we're going to convert, we're going to cast that to a I token manager and var token manager is this. So if you're not very familiar with dependency injection, I have an hour long video that covers almost every aspect of uh, dependency injection. You can see it in the card above. So we have the token manager here and we're going to call the verification verify token method. And that's about it, right? So next we need to dependency inject token manager. And for that, we need to come over here I'm going to say services dot add singleton, right? So I'm going to add the token manager actually as a, a data store. So it has to be singleton, right? Because the database is a singleton and let's give it a try. I think that's it. Let's see whether we can get it to work the first try. So we decorate it. All right. All right. So let's access our API right, without and let's see uh, if we get any error or not. The error says unauthorized and the message is you're not authorized. And this is exactly the message that we provided. That means what? That means the authorization filter is working, right? The authorization filter that we put in place here is it's guarding our API, right? It's basically saying, uh, I think it's on this uh, rot here that doesn't even exist right here, doesn't even contain the authorization filter, uh, authorization header. All right, now we're gonna trigger the authenticate endpoint to see whether we can uh, get authenticated and get the token. Right? So we, our authentication endpoint is authenticate, authenticate. And if we don't provide the password, it's gonna say that you are not authorized. And if we provide the password, but wrong password, uh, again, it's going to say you're not authorized. You provide the password as password, but a wrong, we have with a capital P, it's saying you're not authorized. And we change it to the correct capitalization, but it's still saying you're not authorized. Uh, that's the model binding is incorrect here because we go to the authenticate, you know, our authenticate controller here, it's expecting user and password, right? So the model binding is using the, the name, right? So the name has to match the parameter here. So if you haven't watched my model binding episode, go ahead and click on the card above to take a look at the model binding episode where I talked about model binding to map the information from HTTP request to the parameters, the primitive parameters or complex object, right? So for it to work properly, we need this to be user. And again, we're gonna change to password just to make sure. Uh, so this time it says, it says you're not authorized right here. And now we need to lower P, it should work. Okay, so I got the token and expire very, very soon. <laughs> It's going to expire very, very soon, so we better use it very quickly. And take this one, and we need to send it, we need to trigger the endpoint with this token inside the authorization header. And for that, let's bring, bring up the Postman. And I don't think I have time, I have to request another token. My Postman is still loading. And Postman loads really, really slowly for whatever reason. All right, so we have our get product right here. We can use this. Uh, and header will contain the authorization token and the token that we got is this. I'm pretty sure it has already expired. Let's trigger it and it expire. We can see the error message, which is, which is a good test case. All right, so let's do that. Call this and then it says you're not ours. Um, I'm gonna require a new token and we got the new token. We're gonna copy it. We can see that expires at uh, 15, 57, 47, 47. So we are going to have this value paste here. 
as the authorization header value. We're going to call the endpoint and it successfully returned the result, right? I don't have a real product to return. Uh, at the second phase of the series, we're going to create um, YPPIs and consume them in different applications. But right here, it's just a, if you take a look at the endpoint uh, here, get by ID, we have lots of products ID, which is one that I passed in and sort of false, right? So, and we know that it expires at 47. So now it's expired, right? 57, 47. Now it's 57, 51. And if we take a look at our return endpoint, yes, it expires at 3 p.m., uh, 57 minutes, 47 seconds. Now it's already 58. So that's expired. If we call it again from Postman, you can see an authorized uh, result. An authorized is you are not authorized, and this is our error message. All right. So this is the demonstration where I created the token manager. I created a token. One second. I created a token manager right over here, right, and it has the three different methods that for creating for authentication creating the new token it stores the new token that is created into the data store a mock data store that we created uh, and then verifies the token against you see this is the data store we we created and this is the authentication method uh, against a hard-coded username password we use new token to uh, create a new GUID as a token and stores in the mock data store. And uh, we have a verify token method to verify the existence of the token as well as the expiry date, right? And then we use the token manager uh, in the authentication controller to do the authentication as well as in the token authentication filter to uh, verify the token. And we have covered a little bit about dependency injection inside filters and there are different ways to do it this is the simplest way that i i do uh, but this is not the most elegant way to, but for demonstration purpose we're going to use this i actually personally prefer this approach yeah and then the verification method will actually uh, authenticate against the mock data store and i have used mock data store in my Blazor course where I built a e-commerce application with clean architecture. So if you want to learn about mocking data stores, creating data stores as plugins and use case driven clean architecture. And if you're interested in Blazor, then you can take that course. You can see the first two sections of the course by following the card above. This is the end of this episode. Again, if you enjoy my video tutorials, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe my channel and hit the bell so that you won't miss the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.